Jordan for um, stopping today and talking to me. Um, we're doing a we're doing a, um, a the good person test to find out where we're going afterwards when we die, heaven or hell. Yeah. Now, would you consider yourself to be a good person? Of course. Right. Now, just play along with me, right? Um, when we die, God's going to judge everyone by the same standard. The standard is going to be not religion. Yeah? It's all religions of works of righteousness. He's going to use the Ten Commandments. You've heard of the Ten Commandments. So, yeah? now, let's go through three, four, five to see how well you'll do on judgment day. And I'm not judging you. I feel this test. So did my wife. Yeah? Um, the Ninth Commandment says, Thou shalt not lie. Have you ever told a lie in your life? So have I. What do you call someone who lies? If I lied to you, what would you call me? Well done. First question right. Second one. The eighth commandment says that you not uh, steal. Have you ever took anything in your entire life, irrelevant of the value, and not given it back? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've done the same. I mean, what do you call someone who steals? Um, a, a, th a robber. A thief. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're correct. You're correct. So, um, uh, the third one. Have you ever took God's name in vain? OMG, or the name of Jesus, come out of your lips with anger and rage. Sorry, have you ever took God's name in vain? Have you ever said, oh my G, OMG, oh my God, or in the name of Jesus, come out of your lips? I've done the same. Now, that's very serious. If I was to put your, someone you love, your mum or your dad, your brother or sister's name, and I used it as a swear word, yeah? Taken in vain, it's called blasphemy in the Old Testament, and that would have been a death sentence in the Old Testament, yeah. So we'll do two more and we'll stop there, yeah, because I'm going to give you some good news. But um, the, uh, you're not married? No. no. And first of all, uh, sorry, I meant the ashes. Um, uh, well, you're not married. I'm married to my wife, yeah. The seventh commandment says, I should not commit adultery. If I have an affair, she hasn't heard of us committing adultery, yeah. But I didn't know two ways, Jordan, of committing adultery. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 28, you can read it for yourself, he says, You've heard it said of them of old time, and I shall not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever looks at a woman or a man to lust after them, the sexual desire, has committed adultery with them already in his heart. Now, you're a red-blooded male, the same as me. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? So bad. Last one, I thought, hang on a second. I shall not kill, I've never killed anyone, I'm okay. Yeah, I was wrong. The thought life is going to seize our thought life, our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Yeah. So, have you ever hated anyone in your life? To hate someone? Yeah. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. So, have you ever hated anyone in your life? Because hatred God sees as murder of the heart. It says in 1 John 3 15, whosoever hates his brother has committed murder of the heart. And you know that no murder have eternal life abiding in him. Yeah? So when we've thought all manner of evil against that person, um, God's seen those thoughts and he's going to judge us for those thoughts. Yeah? So you've done that as well. So that's that, that's murder of the heart, they should not kill. Not only physically, but mentally. Yeah? So let's stop there. That's five of the Ten Commandments. And thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for bearing, for bearing with me and listening to me. But what I'm telling you is the gospel truth. If you died today and you went before God, yeah, God would judge you by the Ten Commandments. We've done five. You'd see you now, Jordan, as a lying and thieving, blasphemous, adulterer, and a murderer of heart. If God were to judge you by the Ten Commandments, we'd be innocent or guilty, first of all. Same as, same as the rest of us, same as everybody. Yeah. And the book of James says that if you break one commandment, you're guilty of all sin. No one can keep the commandments in this world, not a soul. That's why we're all guilty before God. His little nursery. I'm like, oh, which Innocent or guilty? You said guilty. Where would God send guilty people? Heaven or hell? God. Right, thank you that you said that. I'm glad that you said that because there's two sides to God. God is uh, God of justice. So you'd be heading for his eternal prison, a place called hell. For Hitler, Stalin, pedophiles, rapists, murderers, they should go to hell. Why? Because if they do that to our family, we want justice. Yeah? So, so it's a God of justice, but he's also, like you said, a God of love. Yeah? So you said um, he forgives you. Now, if I go out today, and I do a heinous bad crime, I rob the bank, I shoot the guard, yeah? I go before a judge in the court of law, and I say to the judge, look judge, I'm really very sorry. Is he gonna let me go? No. That's a man in a court. How much more a holy, righteous, just God? He has to put 
criminals and those who have violated his commandments into his eternal prison called hell. But he is also a God of love and a God of mercy. And the good news, you know, does that first of all, does that concern you that if you die today you'd be headed for his eternal prison called hell? Does that concern you first of all? It should concern you. It concerns me. I don't think I'm going to be there. Why? Because I'm charged of God. Lying, stealing, blasphemy, and murder, adultery, heart. If I'm God child, you know, I'm praying every day, you know, like... That, that is not enough, I know. It's not enough. Good works can't save you. Yeah, good works. I mean, giving the charity, doing this and doing that. You know, if I go to the judge and I say to the judge, look, judge, I'm really very sorry. Um, uh, I do good works. I do this. Is he going to let me go? No, he's not. So let me give you some good news, um, Jordan. Because, you see, God made a way for us to be forgiven through his Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah? Now, that means that, that, means that um, we'd be heading for a place called hell. But the moment we, you know, we repent, right, and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, yeah? You know, he promises that he will remit our sins to us, the present and future. Yeah? So the moment you head for a place called hell, the moment you repent of your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and believe um, even if that he died on the cross, was buried, was resurrected, God promises, because he cannot lie. The Supreme God cannot lie. Yeah? That he will remit your sins past, present and future. And give you, uh, give you a new heart and new desires. You'll be born again and your place in, in heaven will be prepared. Now, when would be a good time to get right with God? If you won the lottery now, a hundred million pounds, you got to go up the cabinet circus and collect the check. When would you collect the money? Straight away. All I'm asking you to do is this, is before you put your head on the pillow tonight, have a think about what I said to you today. It takes two seconds to get right with God. Number one, we ask forgiveness is what we must do. Forgive me, I've sinned, I've lied, I've stolen, I've blasphemed, I've, I've done all of these things. Have mercy upon this sinner. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I submit the surrender of my life unto you from this day forth. You your faith and trust in the Savior, Jesus Christ. And the moment you do, your place in heaven is prepared. I done it 20 years ago, and I'm 20 years clean now because of you. Yeah? The second thing we must do, and the most important thing we must do, is to transfer our goodness. Because we're not good people, George. We're attracted to bad, more than good. Transfer our goodness from ourselves and put our faith and trust in the Savior who paid the price for us on the cross. Okay. The moment, the moment we do, God will forgive us, and, and our peace in heaven will be prepared. No problem. Thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, just before we go, I got to ask you a couple of legal questions. Number one, are you over 16? I'm not Good man. Number two, is it okay for me to show this video on YouTube and, and website and social media purposes? Yes. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I hope to give the same advice to the people. Like but the most important thing is your eternal destiny. I love you and I care about you. I don't want you to go there. I don't, I, don't, I don't want you to go, but you've got to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Do you understand? I think you're at home. Um, That's right. I got the gospel track. I'll give, you, I'll give you this one. What I've done with you is this one. The in person test. And thank you very much for listening to me today. But remember, Two seconds to get ready to go. Do that tonight. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. 54 million people die every day. There's a lot of people around a graveyard. It's all the age groups. Listen to it. Thank you very much.